Time is our most valuable resource, and in many professions, it is critically important to manage it properly. Data science is no exception to that. So keep watching, and I'm gonna share with you all how I manage my time. I'm Richard, and this is Richard on Data. So in data science, it is common that you either have a lot of responsibility or you're functioning in sort of a generalist capacity, meaning you're involved in a ton of different projects. And because you have to run around between different responsibilities all the time, it can really be difficult to get things done. And that's before we get into the worst distractors of all, which are emails and meetings. Now at the end of the day, working your 40 hours or whatever is not what's going to bring economic value to your company. It's what you're able to accomplish in the time that you're working. And most companies are going to be fairly flexible with you. They're going to allow you to manage your own time. So it is on you to do that well. There's this talk of work-life balance, or as Jeff Bezos calls it, work-life harmony to consider as well. So if you go way too hard at your work, whether that's in data science or anything else, you are going to find that other aspects of your life suffer. Now I wanna take a step back from all that and just speak personally on this, in the sense that I work a 40 hour per week regular job as a data scientist, I'm a landlord, and I also make YouTube videos on a fairly consistent schedule. Then all that's on top of trying to maintain a relationship, a healthy life, and also possibly entertaining other entrepreneurial efforts in the future. So if in the time that I'm working, I'm not productive, or I'm not working under some kind of discipline structure, I am going to get destroyed in some way. Now, I'm not saying that I have a perfect system by any stretch of the imagination, but what I do does enable me to get things done and clearly see what I've gotten done day after day and week after week. Before we get into that, I would ask though to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Let's get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And then smash the like button because it really does help my content reach a larger audience. Lastly, if you guys would be willing to support me over on Patreon, there's going to be a link to that in the description and it would be enormously appreciated. All right, so before we step over to my whiteboard and really see what I have, I'm gonna start with some overall principles, the most important of which is you need to know yourself. Most importantly, you need to know what the most productive time of day is for you. Then you need to line up all the tasks that you have in front of you, and you need to identify what the highest priority or most important item is, and you need to do that item when you are most productive. For me personally, I'm most productive in either the late morning or the early afternoon. In fact, I'm a huge fan of blocking time off on my calendar, let's call that focus time, and then using that time to focus on the most important things to me. Having said that, and I know a lot of people are different from me in this respect, but I do get benefit off of what I like to call a snowball effect. Meaning, if there are a bunch of little things that I need to do, sometimes I feel a big sense of accomplishment from doing these things, checking them off the list, and then when it comes time to do what's most important to me, it's done, it's off my radar, and I don't have to be distracted by it or think about it. For that reason, and again, I know a lot of people hate them, but I am a huge fan of to-do lists. There's nothing that gives me a worse or more anxious feeling than looking back at the end of the day and feeling like I got nothing done. And when I check meaningful items off of a list, it really does give me a big dopamine rush, and it gives me this sense of satisfaction that I just want to keep going. I think writing down what you need to do is super important, because if there's a lot on your plate, it's just natural that stuff ends up slipping through the cracks. But the to-do list is not enough by itself. You need prioritization, and you need some additional structure. Just the to-do list by itself is not gonna be enough. And I'm also a huge believer in doing one thing at a time, because if you're trying to multitask and context shift all over the place, it's just a recipe for disaster. But that's enough. Without further ado, come over to my whiteboard with me. Oh, there you are. Good to see you again. I thought I'd lost you. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have four distinct sections here. And those are work, YouTube, health, and miscellaneous where the miscellaneous bucket consists of things like relationship-related things, errands, work on my house, just general stuff like that. 
But what's great about having sections like this is in and of itself, it helps keep these different areas in balance. Like if several days go by and I haven't checked anything off the health list, well, that's a big problem. Now I like to pick a time frame for this of about three to four days. Reason being one day is too short of a window to really think about, but it is a lot more difficult to accurately estimate what you can and cannot get done within a period of one week. You'll see up here that I have a period that I'm looking at of November 30 through December 2nd, which is Monday through Wednesday of the coming week in which I'm recording this video. So let's start up here at the upper left section of the board, and these are the tasks that I have to do for my day job. So you'll notice that the first item that I have on this list is provide email feedback about SOPs. This is just one of those email related tasks that I have to do. It's probably gonna take me somewhere around 20 minutes. And this is probably the very first thing that I'm going to do when I start work on Monday. Reason being, first thing in the morning, especially on Mondays, is not exactly my most useful time of day. So if I get started and just knock that thing out, I have one less thing that I have to worry about during the week. Now the next item on this list is make requested fixes to a Shiny app. Let's suppose I sent some Shiny app over to a client, then they bounced it back to me, they have some requests for some changes or some improvements that I can make. Well, you'll also notice that I have a star next to it, and that's because I've identified that this item is the single most important thing that I have to do in the work category. So sometime in the late morning or the early afternoon, I am going to block some time off, let's say two to three hours, and I'm going to focus solely on this task. I estimate that it's probably gonna take me somewhere around three to four hours, and during my most productive time of day, this is the thing that I'm going to focus on. I also have under that, create a new Shiny module. Let's say another client was talking to me and they want me to build out either some little Shiny app or a new section in an app. And I estimate that this is gonna take me somewhere around eight hours or a full day, but it's not necessarily the most urgent and important thing on my calendar right now. So probably, let's say on Tuesday or Wednesday, this task is going to be done, it's going to be checked off, and then on that following day, I can put the star next to creating this new Shiny module, and that can be the new task that I focus on for that day. I have some training that I need to complete, it comes in four parts that I'm gonna break down, and that's all gonna fall under training. This is probably stuff that I'm gonna do maybe later in the week, first thing in the morning, or on any of these days at the very end of the day when I'm feeling more sleepy and I'm not necessarily at my most productive during those times either. Now what I'll say is these four tasks are almost definitely not going to take me the full 24 hours or the entire period of the three days. And I do this very intentionally just because in this line of work, for, for me anyway, stuff can fall on my plate occasionally, like something will come up that I have to do. And then maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday when that happens, maybe it's something that I can knock out in a day and then I'll add it to the list. But this way, it does make me a little bit more flexible that I've not overloaded myself up front. As they say, under promise and over deliver. So that's it for my day job. Now for a Richard on data first, I'm going to take you backstage to where I plan out my full week for YouTube content, which is of course right here. I try to make two videos per week, one of which is some kind of programming tutorial, and one of which is a video like this one where I'm going on about some topic, but you generally see me on camera the entire time. And these videos in which I'm on camera the entire time take much more time than the programming tutorials, just because for structural purposes, I do rely fairly heavily on a script. Creating that script is hands down the most challenging and the most time consuming, but also probably the most important part of the work that I do with YouTube. So as a result, I do have a star next to scripting my on-camera video. And typically what I'll do is I block off Tuesday evenings for getting these things done. As for the other items on this list, I've got scripting the R tutorial that you're going to see next week 
filming VR tutorial that I wrote last week, but that you're going to see this week. And then there are other things that I have to do, like creating a thumbnail, editing a description, tags, and just general things like that, that I'm all lumping together under an umbrella of editing an R tutorial. So hopefully you get the idea by now, but the next section on this board is my health. And yes, this is important enough that it does get its own quadrant. So the single most important thing there is working out. I do your standard three days at the gym routine of back, legs, and chest. And again, this is the most important thing. So I have the back day start here. That's probably something that I'll do on Monday with the leg day coming on Wednesday. And these are typically what I'll do like first thing in the morning or immediately when I'm done with work. I also take a pretty strong regimen of vitamins and supplements, but I gotta be totally honest, I'm the absolute worst at actually remembering to take them. So if I put this on the list, number one, I actually remember to take them, but then also these really are the easiest and quickest things in the world to check off the list. I also like to go for walks during the day just to burn some additional calories. I'd like to do that twice during this three day period. So I've got two boxes to check for walking. Then for my miscellaneous section over here, the most important thing is buying a Christmas present for my girlfriend. I'm not gonna say what that is because she watches my videos. I've got meal prep. I've got cleaning my garage. And now for this one, my garage is an absolute abomination. But this is one of those things that it's really not important enough that I need to give it more than 30 minutes. So I'm going to time box it to 30 minutes and that's it. And then I've got creating a budget for the month of December. So now you get the idea of how I stay productive at my data science job, produce regular content for my YouTube channel, and at the same time, balance other aspects of my life. But I will add a few things to this. First of all, you do need to know what's most important to you, both at work and in your overall life. Otherwise, whether you adopt a system like this or not, you are going to struggle with what aspects of your life to even balance with others, and you're gonna struggle figuring out what to do in order to be productive rather than just busy, which is a different thing. My friend and fellow YouTuber Ken G recommended a book called One Thing to me at one point, and I must say is probably the best book on time management I've ever read. The key question from that book is to think about what the one thing that you can do day after day is that's going to make other things unnecessary or easier. You block off time and you focus hard on that thing day after day, but you also do it with a longer term horizon, several years down the road, thinking backwards. I'll have a link to that book in the description. And then another one that I really like, which is an absolute classic, is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. His key piece of advice is to focus your time on what's not urgent, but is important, because that's exactly the type of stuff that tends to slip through the cracks most. Meanwhile, for stuff that's urgent, but not important, delegate or say no to it, and just start saying no to those things which are neither urgent nor important. At the end of the day, I think whatever system that you choose to use is totally up to you, but I would advocate to anybody who's in the data science or just generally any other type of entrepreneurial space, your money can be replaced. That is, you're gonna spend your money and then you're gonna get some back. Your time is not like that. Once you lose it, it's gone forever. So manage it like it is your most important resource because that's exactly what it is. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button and drop me a comment down below and let me know how you manage your time. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.